For the past year, I've basically never been tired during the workday. Here are eight techniques that I use to manage my energy throughout the day and ensure that I'm as productive as humanly possible. Okay, first of all, we gotta understand the difference between energy management and time management. So most of you guys are probably familiar with the concept of time management. Basically, it involves breaking down your day into dedicated chunks of time for specific tasks. And while I am a huge fan of time blocking, to-do lists, you guys know this, I've made like 10 videos about that stuff, I feel like we don't talk about energy management enough. Energy management is the process of monitoring what behaviors give you energy and which ones take away your energy. You basically become a student of yourself. I've noticed that when I plan to do something, what to determines whether it gets done is how alert and focused I am while I'm doing it. If you just ate a donut, drank a soda, got four hours of sleep last night, yeah, you're not going to be able to finish that project or watch a lecture. You'll just be super lethargic and end up doing nothing at all. With that, let's get into the techniques. All right, you guys have probably already heard this before, but I cannot stress the importance of quality sleep enough. The night before your workday will strongly determine how focused and energized you are the next morning when you're actually working. You need to be getting eight hours of sleep as many nights as possible. Nowadays, I hit eight hours probably 95% of the time, but I'd say a good goal is to hit eight hours at least six out of seven days of your week. If you absolutely have to stay up late, just limit it to one day per week. There are a few different reasons as to why I'm able to get that eight hours in every single night. First of all, I've been working as a software engineering intern for the past year. But let me tell you, working a full-time job is so much better for your sleep than being a student. When you work nine to five, you basically almost never have to work after hours. Your workday almost always stops at five or 6 p.m. Whereas when you're a student, it's so easy to procrastinate, fall behind, and then pull an all-nighter to finish an assignment. So that's one reason why it's infinitely easier. But another reason is that I've mastered the ability to fall asleep early around 9.30 to 10 p.m. every single night. Honestly, now this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but I cannot remember a single night in the past year where it's been 10 p.m. and I could not fall asleep not even one night. Now that could be because I'm kind of a morning person genetically, but I do have a hypothesis that a lot of you guys are morning people too, but you have shitty sleep habits, which turn you into a night owl. I've talked to a couple of my friends about this and they all say, oh, I'd love to wake up early, but I just can't fall asleep on time. But when I ask them about their sleep environment and habits, it's fucking terrible. Their behaviors are why they can't fall asleep, not their genetics. Here's a quick guide on how you can get to bed early and get that eight hours of sleep every single night. First of all, light is your greatest lever. When it gets to be 8.30 or 9 p.m., turn off all the lights around your place. You can keep a single lamp or bedroom light open and crack open the door so it shines into the living room. But largely, you want it to be super dim when the evening rolls around. Light stops your melatonin production, which is the signal to your brain that it's time for bed. Blue light is the worst. That's the light that comes straight from the sun during the day, and it's the light that's in all of those white fluorescent ceiling lights. Red light is better. I've retrofitted my entire apartment with those so I can have a light on in the evening, but also not disrupt my sleep. I have these awesome red night lights that I plug all around the kitchen and the bathroom. So if I have to get up during the night, I can navigate around using those instead of flipping on these horrible ceiling lights. According to Andrew Huberman, who's this prolific neuroscientist and podcaster, lower position lights are even better for preserving melatonin. So even if there's a light that's the same level of brightness, if the light is on the ceiling versus on the ground, it'll be worse for you. So you want to make sure that if you do have to have some lights on, they're as low as possible. Floor night lights are the best, but you can also get away with desk lamps. I mean, this makes sense. If you think about when you should be at maximum alertness, it's when the sun is blasting down from as high as possible. My sleep has been so much better since I figured out how to use light in the evening. Also, please buy a sleeping mask. These are unbelievably overpowered. I know people who have their windows wide open in the night with street lights blasting in, and then they complain about not being able to fall asleep at night. A sleeping mask will block all of that horrible light throughout the night and help you get a good night of sleep. And they're so cheap too. You can get the best possible ones for like 15 bucks max. You should also turn your temperature down down at night, around 66 to 67 degrees is optimal with a warm blanket. Most people, especially the guys I know, tend to run too hot in the night. Finally, I know you guys have heard this before, but put your phone away at 9.30 p.m. I'm sure a lot of you guys have had this happen before. You're all ready to go to bed, but you fall into a TikTok rabbit hole and end up scrolling for hours until it's 1 a.m. and your sleep is messed up. If you turn those lights off and put your phone across the room and listen to a podcast or read a book, trust me, you will eventually be able to fall asleep. And even if you can't fall asleep early, you end up staying up till midnight, 1 a.m. you should still wake up early at 7 a.m. That way you'll have some extra sleep deprivation which will help you fall asleep the next night. Before we continue, make sure to follow me on Twitter. There I post software engineering memes and reactions to all the crazy shit that's been going down lately. Anyway, speaking of the morning, the morning is when you should reverse everything I've told you to do so far. 
first of all, there's this app Alarmy, which will force you to walk around and scan a barcode for the alarm to go off. This is great because it takes a ton of effort to turn off, which will wake you up enough to not immediately fall back asleep. Also, this is a counter to most people's advice, but I'm actually a fan of using your phone first thing in the morning. This is especially helpful if you're first trying to build the habit of waking up early. Just wake up, walk around, turn your alarmy off, and then just lay in bed and scroll on social media. At least you won't fall back asleep. Then after a week of waking up early, hanging out on your phone, and not going back to sleep, you can slowly start to phase out that morning phone usage. After you get out of bed, you should immediately go around your place and flip on every light in the entire building. I have this practice where as soon as I wake up, I will immediately launch myself out of bed, throw open the curtain, and then I'll turn on every single light in my apartment without exception. I'm trying to signal to myself that now is the time to be alert and awake. There should basically be no shadows around. If there are, you need more lights. See, I will do this at home at 6.30 a.m. and then my mom will come out and start turning the lights off. Honestly, fuck the environment, bro. I don't care if you're wasting a little bit of power to keep those lights on, you need to wake up. Also, as soon as the sun comes up, I will go onto my balcony and stare directly at the skyline. I'm trying to soak up those photons. Huberman is a huge fan of this. He really emphasizes the importance of getting your morning light and getting some sunshine right after you wake up. Okay, that's my sleep crash course for getting to bed on time and waking up early. But here are some more tips to boost your energy, provided you're already well rested. Let's talk about diet. Most people never think about the effect that their diet has on their daily energy. If you've ever felt lethargic in the afternoon, yawning constantly, almost like you have zero will to live, yeah, it's probably your lunch diet. When I was a kid, I had no understanding of the impact that nutrition and food selection had on your focus. I distinctly remember eating a massive carb-filled lunch every single day and then passing out in the class right after lunch. Even worse, my history teacher would dim down the lights during sixth period, which would ensure that I pass out every day. The reason food Food impacts your energy is because of the way certain macronutrients affect your blood sugar. Blood sugar is the concentration of glucose in your bloodstream at any given moment. Diabetic people are super familiar with this. They usually have a continuous glucose monitor to make sure that their blood sugar doesn't go too low or too high. Now, blood sugar isn't inherently bad. You just want to make sure it stays in a good range. If you have low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, you can get headaches, nausea, brain fog, dizziness. The problem is that our bodies are not evolved to deal with cinnamon toast crunch and concentrated apple juice use, which is why most people have problems with massive spikes in blood sugar rather than having a too low blood sugar. The greater your spike in blood sugar, the more lethargic and tired you'll feel after your meal. Let's say the time is 2 p.m. and I bring you a delicious can of Coca-Cola. You drink the whole thing, enjoying every last drop. Within minutes, that 44 grams of sugar is going to hit your bloodstream, giving you an insane spike. If I came back in 25 minutes, I'd bet that you'd be super unfocused, tired, full of brain fog. That's because of the sudden rise and drop in blood sugar. Sugar. Well, how do you know which foods will give you a massive spike in blood sugar? You have to consider the distribution of macronutrients, so how much fat, protein, and carbohydrates are in your meal, as well as the kind of carbohydrate and how fast you eat it. This is a fact. The more processed and refined the carbohydrates you eat, like pasta, white bread, sugary cereal, and soda, the worse the effect on your blood sugar. Now, less processed, single-ingredient carbohydrates, like a plain potato, will have a better impact on your blood sugar. And the combination matters as well. If I drink a Coke by itself versus drinking a Coke and eating a lean steak with it, the steak makes it way, way better because the fat and the protein in the steak will mix with the carbohydrate and end up leveling out your blood sugar. Now, I'm not saying it's good for you. The Coke is bad no matter what you eat with it, but it's better to have some fat and protein with your Coke rather than drinking the Coke by itself. So if you feel like you absolutely need that sugar fix, make sure to combine it with some fat and protein, like something like Greek yogurt. It'll be significantly better for you in the long term. So yeah, avoid processed refined carbs throughout the workday. During lunch, I like to minimize my carbs while having a lean meat like Greek grilled chicken or beef. Sometimes I'll have rice with it, which isn't too bad as it's not super processed and I'm combining it with the healthy fat and protein from the meat. Let me tell you, when I was a freshman, I used to eat an entire frozen pizza for lunch and I would pass out for hours. I don't miss those days. Here are some additional smaller tips that I use to stay alert and focused throughout the day. If I find myself feeling tired or unfocused, I will usually go to a coffee shop or a library just to change up the environment. That novel environment combined with a walk is usually enough to snap me back into focus. Sometimes I'll also take a quick 20 minute power nap which works wonders. But make sure it doesn't go longer than 25 minutes, otherwise you might start to slip into deep sleep, which is an issue if it happens during the day. Exercise is also really important. Sometimes when I'm tired, I'll hit the gym, which will give me a second wind of energy throughout the day. If you like this video, you can check out some of my other videos on the screen. There I break down some of my other time management principles and strategies. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. A like would be incredible and I will see you in the next video.